Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2020-2021 Panini Mosaic UEFA Euro Soccer. Two box random country break number 11. One spot gets you two in this two box break. So let's double you up. Big thanks everybody here for making this happen. There's all the teams right there. Let's roll it, let's randomize it. Two and a two, four times. One, two, three, and four. We got Steve Wright down to John Ryder. Two and a two for the hard way for the teams. One, two, three, and four. North Macedonia down to Germany. All right, Steve Wright with North Macedonia, PJ with Turkey, Jason with Portugal, Matthew with Finland, PJ with Poland, Ryan with the Netherlands, Jason with Croatia, John with Wales, Matthew Shear with Ukraine, Jason with Russia, Matthew with France and Hungary, Paul, PJ, that is, with Austria, Steve Wright with Italy and the Czech Republic, Matthew Shear with, the, with uh, Switzerland, Steve Wright with Spain, Brian with Belgium, Jason with Scotland, PJ with Denmark, Brian with Slovakia, uh, Matthew with Sweden, Brian with England, and John with Germany. So let's get all this on one screen. Let's sort by column A. Now feel free to trade if you'd like. While you're considering trades, let's see which one we're gonna do. So we've got uh, two boxes up here, you can see on the top camera, and two boxes down here. So we'll select a die, we'll roll the die, we'll select that one. One, two, three for the top two, four, five, six for the bottom two. And six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this we will save for the next break that's coming up, number 12. So I kind of see it a little small right there, but it has number 12 right there. All right, we got uh, Macedonia, Spain, Italy, Czech Republic for trade. If anybody want to uh, make some offers for, for all of Steve Wright's teams. So we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades, if anyone makes an offer on that, and then we'll have the break. Stick around. All right, welcome back, folks. A little bit of trade chatter, but in the end, no deals were done here in break number 11. Thanks, everybody, for making this happen. So let's, let's pop this open. Let's see what we got. Good luck. Well, Switzerland, who were down to 10 men, ended up taking Spain to penalties today. Spain, who's been struggling mightily with penalties, penalty kicks, ended up winning it on penalties. They're very happy. Switzerland, very sad, but they put a put a put up a valiant effort in the late game. Uh, Italy uh, won in regular time, two to one. Belgium did end up getting a goal, but but the Italians were seemed to be in control the entire match. The um, Belgium kind of squandered some chances. It looked like they had some good moments in front of goal, but it just didn't quite, just didn't quite get there. All right, and we'll see, we'll see England tomorrow. Now remember, all cards ship. And it's probably a good idea to, to kind of do a little research, especially on some of these rookies. Right, wherever it says, like, 
like Hungary's Willy Orban, just to see if there's any uh, secondary market value there. Maybe worth just keeping on hand just to see how they do in the following club season. Cristiano Ronaldo for Jason and Portugal. He, he must have another major tournament in him before he starts to slow down, right? I would think so. What's that? No, you can toss those or give them away, whatever. <laughs> give away boxes. There's Heinrich Dalsgaard for Denmark. And the autograph is Bukayo Saka. Nice. Uh, he has been getting a lot of... I don't think he's been playing too many minutes for the England national team, but I know he's he's an up-and-coming star for Arsenal and, and, and for England, really. And that goes to Brian Croft and the, th the three Lions. Is it coming home? Football may be coming home. Yeah, he's still he's still really young though. He's he's got many more international major international tournament cycles to work through. Got a couple of rookie parallels here. Got to keep an eye out for those. Eric Jennings thinking maybe maybe a one more World Cup for Cristiano Ronaldo at at, at, at least that high of a level, right? Where he's playing like 80, 90 minutes a game. I could see him. And then I can see him taking taking a role where. Uh, I can see him taking a role where. Where he may end up playing like, you know, 30, 20, 30 minutes at the end of matches, maybe the next Euros or something like that. All depending on health. Mbappe is young too. It's another player that'll still have a lot of time to make up for for missed penalties and whatnot. And that's a blue parallel to 99. That's uh, Stefan Ilsanker for Austria, PJ. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a strange one. Eric Jennings, seeing the uh, seeing the World Cup in the fall winter, because a lot of domestic leagues will have to start adjusting their schedule. Like England, traditionally the English Premier League traditionally does not have a a winter break. I think Bundesliga, maybe La Liga, have almost like a three or four week long international break. Maybe maybe even more. Not an international break, but a winter break. Between December and a good part of January, the, through the January transfer window. Meanwhile, for the Premier League, it's the uh, they, they call it the, the the festive fixture season, where they cram they cram a ton of matches through the through the Christmas and Boxing Day weeks as well. Mr. Mike Daddy, what's going on? How are you?
Are they are they expanding the group of teams in the World Cup? Because originally it's thirty. It's been thirty-two, I think, for a while, right? They did expand. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if I agree with the with the expansion, but I, su I suppose it's inevitable. Every tournament wants to get more teams in, more matches, more money, right? The I think college football is trying to. Are they trying or did they already? College football is trying to get more teams into the national championship bracket playoffs. Even even. NCAA basketball, even college of basketball, is trying to squeeze in a few extra matches here and there with play-in tournaments. It's Jaden Sancho for Brian in England, the new uh, the new Manchester United man. Yeah, I mean, if, if we can find a second stained glass in this case, that would be awesome. DJ, that would be really cool. I don't know how common that is, but I'll always hope for it. Uh, 10 out of 49, there's Yuri Telmans. That's for Belgium. Crash out of the tournament today. Brian Croft with Belgium. For the Netherlands, there's Ryan Gravenberch, rookie. For the Orange, that'll be for Brian Croft as well. Rookie red for Slovakia, Mark Rodak. And Rosario's saying in 2026, they're expanding it to 48 teams. So maybe the one in Cutter is still 32? Twenty twenty six is the one here in North America, right? The one we the one that we get? It's Nico Williams for Wales. No, yeah, we will have little excuse when they, if they expand it to 48 teams. Yeah, we'll have little excuse not to qualify for, for that. Well, I think we may get automatic qualification anyway because we're hosting along with Canada and Mexico. So those three clubs may have automatic qualifications. That's how they've traditionally done it. All right, and there's the autograph. Nice, Iker Casillas. The Spanish keeper going to Steve Wright in Spain. Tried to trade, couldn't trade Mojo. And that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Another great two boxes of uh, Mosaic UEFA Euro Soccer in the books. Uh, that was break 11. More footy coming up in a different video right after this. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. <laughs>